What's your favorite, this much of this will log you out of life fact? It won't do you in, but if you eat too many bananas, like 40 I think, you won't be able to come to my place of work because you will set off the radiation monitors. Oh, I've got a story for this. We had a guy set off the monitors at our old facility. We investigated it, and it turns out he had just returned from a trip to Europe, and had been consuming a lot of wild game and mushrooms in the area that still had enough residual fallout from Chernobyl to get picked up by our HPG whole body counters. We also continually have big game hunters trip our system when they would be eating large amounts of elk and big game animal meat. Because of the higher amounts of CS-137 compared to other animal meats due to their diet. Nutmeg in large, but not nearly as large as you might think, doses is a potent psychoactive that will basically make you go insane. Infamous heroin addict William S. Burroughs wrote that the only people he ever met whom he thought were truly beyond redemption were nutmeg addicts. I tried a rather large amount circa 1994. I was high for about 28 hours. It was not pleasant in the slightest. No insanity from it, just a never ending high. Lethargy is the perfect way to describe it. For me, it was essentially all the bad parts of pot without any of the good ones. Surprisingly, I suffered no headache. I just recall going to sleep twice, thinking, when I wake up, I'm sure I'll feel normal again, and having no such luck. Good god. So that's why all these girls love their pumpkin spice lattes. Botulism, caused by exposure to the botulinium toxins, is super lethal. It takes about one billionth of a gram per pound of body weight to kill a person. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that means a 200 millionth of a gram can kill you. Isn't that what they use in Botox? Yup, deadliest poison known to man, used to treat migraines and wrinkles. I think it's something like 8 non-alcoholic beers equals about 1 light beer. They're all around 0.5 alcohol by volume, so assuming they're all right at that level, you can have quite a few and never even get a buzz. 6 liters of water within 3 hours will unalive you. That's why the kid who could suck up a water bottle in an instant said he could only do it 2 or 3 times a day. I still remember the story of the mom who went on a radio show to win her kid Nintendo Wii by chugging water, and then didn't survive. Yeah, a nurse called the station and told them how dangerous it was. They laughed her off and went on with the show. I heard the broadcast, it was local to me. I watched a YouTube video about this recently, and it seems like they got a decent amount of calls about it, because there had recently been a college kid who got logged out of life the same way. People were straight up warning them about all the symptoms she was feeling, and they just kept going. Wow, that took a dark turn very quickly. On a side note, you can also get drunk from water, but the amount it would take to actually get to that point would wind you up in the hospital long before you got to it. Brazil nuts can cause selenium poisoning. I had to explain this to my father-in-law, as I eat like one a day due to Hashimoto's disease, so I know the lethal dose. He went on a health food kick and was eating them by the bowl daily, for God knows how long by that point. I told him to stop, or he'd unalive himself. He didn't believe me. The next time we visited, they were mysteriously gone from his house, and he was completely unwilling to even acknowledge that he'd ever eaten Brazil nuts at all. You can go buy a bottle of Tylenol at darn near any grocery store, gas station, or pharmacy with 500 milligram capsules or tablets. It is entirely possible to do irreparable damage to your liver and kidneys with a surprisingly small amount. Sure, other comorbidities need to be present, but losing track of how many you've taken is reasonably common, especially amongst individuals in mental decline. Making acetaminophen poisoning one of the leading causes of acute liver failure leading to being logged out of existence. And it is really not a fun way to go either. Towards the end of his life, my grandpa had a really bad arthritis in his hands, to the point where he couldn't really move them without them hurting. And so his solution was to take over-the-counter painkillers, extra strength ones, in order to numb the pain so that he could function a little bit easier. Over time, they slowly caused his hands to stop functioning at all, and he ended up having to have his thumb amputated. Didn't fix the arthritis, just made the pain worse. Except now, he couldn't take any more meds because his liver couldn't handle it. Not a particular thing, but lethal dose is decided by how much will unalive 50% of the people who take it. The medical shorthand for this is LD50. 
To expand on this, LD50 is a typical measurement, but you will sometimes see other percentages. For example, LD100 is the dose that will unalive 100% of test subjects, LD25, 25% of subjects, etc. It's also important to note that lethal dose is not tested on humans. So LD50 of a substance is the amount it takes to unalive 50% of animal test subjects, often mice or rats, but sometimes cats, monkeys, even fish. It's a good approximation, but can't tell us exactly what the effect will be on humans. Most importantly, LD50 is not the minimum lethal dose. Some people may be more vulnerable and have lethal effects at a much lower level of exposure. So WD40 unalives 40% of the white dudes who drink it. Noted. When I worked as a carpenter, there was another carpenter who would always assure us that a person could eat a pound of shellac and be just fine. However, I cannot confirm this to be true. Shellac is non-toxic, made from bugs. Specifically from the secretions of the female lac bug native to India. And according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, it's actually sometimes used in cake glazes. Huh. One of my favorite trombone fun facts is that within a human lifetime, you'll eat about a trombone's worth of zinc and copper, the metals that make brass. I had a kid ask me once, so if I eat a trombone right now, will I never have to eat zinc or copper again? And the answer was yes, because you wouldn't survive eating a trombone. Though I later checked a source for how many minerals we actually need in a human lifetime, and it turns out the original source was very wrong. We apparently eat 950 pounds of copper and 502 pounds of zinc in a lifetime. So considering that a large trombone is about 6 pounds, that means you'd be eating about 4 pounds of copper and 2 pounds of zinc, which works out to around 250 large trombones or 500 small trombones eaten in a human lifetime. But you still would not survive if you ate an entire trombone in one sitting. Black licorice has a compound called glycyzerin that in large doses can lower your potassium levels and cause heart arrhythmias. If you're 40 or older, eating 2 ounces of black licorice a day for at least 2 weeks could land you in the hospital with an irregular heart rhythm or arrhythmia. It only takes 7 milliliters of hydrofluoric acid to absorb all the free calcium in the body of an adult human. My source? I work with hydrofluoric acid, and we have a very extensive safety training and routine tabletop drills to cover what to do in case of an exposure. Calcium gluconate can save lives. I've worked with hydrofluoric acid too, and they tell a horror story about a guy there before my time. A container of it got all over him in the lab, not his fault. He quickly stripped, yelled at someone to call an ambulance, washed off in the safety shower, and started slathering himself with the calcium gel. The person who called said the ambulance could be there in 35 minutes. And because this was New York, someone said there's a hospital only a few blocks away. So the guy grabs all the safety station gel tubes and starts running fully naked, shiny with gel through New York City. When he gets stopped at a red light, he waits and applies more gel. He finally gets to the hospital after sprinting there and frantically tells them what happened. And they gently reassure him that he'll be just fine while firmly moving him into the psych ward. The story I've been told multiple times isn't really consistent on how he convinced the doctors that he just repeated himself enough times and asked for the names of who to sue when he dies and his family will make a lot of money at least. But he does eventually convince them, and receives the needed calcium injections, and all before the ambulance would have picked him up from the lab. Safety first, kids. Amanita phylloides, also known as the death cap mushroom, requires only 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of body weight to be lethal. One mushroom typically contains about 15 milligrams. The biggest danger is that these mushrooms look just like mushrooms that are also perfectly edible. Another set of look-alike mushrooms are Galerina marginata and Foliotina rugosa, which are often mistaken for psilocybin mushrooms. Potassium chloride, the stuff they use to stop your heart during an execution, is also the same stuff they use as a salt substitute in low-sodium products. Too much of that salt substitute is definitely lethal, and there's even a tiny warning label if you look for it. If you search, you can find several cases of people no longer being alive attributed specifically to this product. Ointments with methyl salicylate, like Icy Hot and Tiger Bomb, can harm you if you use it on over 40% of your body. A teen some years back used two types of muscle bombs and adhesive pads at the same time, and it ended up being fatal. Two things you learn quickly in electrical engineering. 
The first is the right hand rule. When you are touching electronic components that may be charged, use your right hand as it is further from your heart versus the left, so you are less likely to be unalived if something were to go wrong. The human body is more or less a giant bag of salt water after all. The second is to always touch with the back of your hand first. If you use your palm or fingers, you risk the current causing your muscles to tense, and then you grab hold of the circuit, and you'll be unable to let go until long after you're gone, or someone breaks you off the circuit. Salt. Two tablespoons full of salt is not good for you. There was a case some years ago where a kid mixed up salt and sugar in a dessert, and his mother made him eat the whole thing as punishment. The kid didn't survive. The mom got off easy because the judge believed her that she really didn't know. So I looked it up to see if any of this is true, and I found on the FDA website that dietary guidelines recommend adults limit sodium intake to less than 2,300 milligrams per day, which it says is equal to about one teaspoon of table salt. It also says the average American intakes about 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. So with that said, what this poster said about two teaspoons in a day being lethal might actually track in a lot of cases, but I would assume body weight is a major factor here. In the area where I grew up, the maximum age for participating in Halloween celebrations was 12. A typical 12 year old has a mass of about 50 kilograms. According to a study I saw, the median lethal dose of sugar is 28.5 grams per kilogram. Hence, it takes 1,425 grams of sugar to unalive someone of that age range. There are around 8 to 12 grams of sugar in a typical fun size candy bar, often given out for Halloween. As such, it takes about 150 pieces of candy to be fatal to one of these Halloween goers. Of course, this varies widely by person and by candy consumed. What's funny is that I once handed out Halloween candy from one of the main street stores, thanks to knowing the owner, and handed out over 700 pieces so it seems fair to assume that a lot of these trick-or-treaters are getting enough candy to be cause for concern. They ought to throw up long before it becomes cause for concern. My kid once ate all the Valentine's candy in one sitting and barfed hot cocoa all evening. As little as four or five uncooked kidney beans becomes toxic and will make you sick. Not sure how many it would take to be lethal though. Not only this, but raw kidney bean toxicity becomes more potent if they're not cooked properly. You have to boil them for at least 10 minutes first. If you take the immune support supplement Airborne three times a day like the instructions say, you will ingest 300% your daily value of vitamin A. That is the maximum amount of vitamin A you can eat before it starts doing liver damage. So hopefully you don't have any other vitamin A sources in your diet. So vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin as well as D, E, and K, which does mean that too high of a dosage can be fatal, but when looking at a couple different labels from different versions of the product online, it looks like it never quite reaches 100% daily value. I'm seeing 67% at the top. And I do see a label here that says take up to three times per day. So it's not necessarily recommended to do so, but it's that you can. The most common daily value of vitamin A that I'm seeing here on these labels is 40%, which is a little bit concerning because three of those would put you at 120% your daily value. And unfortunately, I'm not sure how long it takes for a fat-soluble vitamin to metabolize in your system, but I imagine going over your daily value and then still eating food like a normal human being would probably keep you above your daily value for that day. And products like this are usually taken multiple days in a row, for sometimes weeks, maybe months on end. I'd say one or two a day should be just fine, depending on which version you're getting, but three seems like an attempt to get people to take more and then have to come back to buy more sooner, while just barely avoiding fatal dosage. So make sure you read your labels and know your vitamins, guys, because I'm sure it's not just this product. Okay, now we move into the rapid fire segment for stories too short to make a full entry out of, but too good to be left out. Let's jump in. An ounce of polar bear liver contains enough vitamin A to be lethal. You'll get logged out of life faster without sleep than without food. To overdo it on cannabis, you'd have to down a telephone-sized joint in 45 minutes. There used to be a website where you could enter your height and weight, and it would tell you how many cans of Mountain Dew it would take to be lethal to you. Consuming just 6 teaspoons of cinnamon powder in one sitting can potentially lead to being logged out of life by cinnamon challenge gone horribly wrong. 
A few years back, a person got hospitalized because they ate 412 chicken nuggets in one sitting. The LD50 of falling is about 40 feet for humans. 60 or more ounces of cannabis taken at once is fatal, if dropped from high enough. You can technically slap a human being into being cooked alive, if slapped enough times or slapped hard enough. And there's a YouTuber who did exactly that with a chicken. So guys, that's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm Redlist, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Oh, you got, lady. Rapture is a paradise of the ego.